I've always loved Christmas, partly because of what I remember from Christmas as a kid, but also because of my own kids. I wanted to do a lot um, inside and outside the house. What I would do during the winter after I moved into this place, I would invite my mom and dad and brother over, and my dad and brother, they were the ones who would put up the lights. <laughs> so I wouldn't really do anything outside. I would just kind of supervise. <laughs> They did the initial lights, you know, across the top of the house. And I'm not even sure if I can get up there this year to put them up there, but um, they put up a lot of the high stuff. And they would come back every year and, you know, and, and work on them with me. After my dad died, it was just my brother who would come over. And then we were doing it together at that point. And then they moved out to Sydney three years ago. And I think after he left was when you know, I, I thought I obviously need to <laughs> take a greater hand in my own lights, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. We had a warm spell just before Christmas and I was marking end of term essays. I think I might have been in, even into marking exams and that's all I was doing was marking and I needed some way to get rid of all the pent up restless energy from the term. And so I started putting up Christmas lights outside, and I started, I started looking around and seeing what I could gather from the house and the garage just to do different things outside. So one of the things that I did that first year was I built an arch over the sidewalk, and I made a, um, it's just sort of a front of what looks like a building. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything in particular, so it's a bit generic. It being a stable, it's, you know, it's certainly reminds me of the Christmas story. Um, but I can also just kind of, it can also just be a barn. <laughs> so most of this stuff has a, has a bit of a history, but I'm pretty sure Don gave me this a few years ago. So he asked me about it every single year. So I always make sure that I have it up. He's always been the one who has loved Christmas the most. And he's always loved putting up lights. And um, for years, he was uh, living at my parents' place and he and my dad would uh, put lights up. And my brother is very ill. And uh, we're kind of expecting this is gonna be his last Christmas and they're gonna come out here this year. So he would not be impressed if I didn't have lots of lights up. <laughs> I want to make it as uh, special as I can for him, for sure. I lost my sight in a car accident when I was 10. It was down in um, southern Alberta. I was staying at my cousin's farm, and we were going swimming in the afternoon. We took the truck to go down to the Old Man River, and we uh, turned off the highway onto a sort of a secondary highway and we um, hit another car at the top of the hill. My cousin was killed in that accident and I was in the hospital for four months, mostly because of a broken leg and I have prosthetics in both eyes. I think I got out of the hospital right around this time of year, either the very end of November or the beginning of, of December. I guess a lot of the things that had happened and a lot of the adjustments that I had to make, I mean, I, I made a lot of them fairly quickly and fairly easily, but I mean, it took years and years to understand the impact on me and on the family, my immediate family, and then, you know, even the extended family, because it, it affected a lot of people. My cousin who was killed in the accident, his name was Graham, and his memory has been with me for, you know, all the years since that accident. And it wasn't until going down to a funeral um, in McLeod last May and visiting the grave that it sort of struck me again that when he died, he was only 13, he was just a kid. 
and you know, just with all the years and all the things that I had to go through in order to deal with my own loss of sight and his death, I, you know, part of me forgot that. And then it was, it was nice to be reminded of that, I guess. See, my kids do enjoy the lights, but I do think they, they think I'm obsessed or slightly crazy. And my, you know, my obsession is very obvious to the world because nobody else around here does lights like this. This is the part my brother used to do all the time. He's a year and a half younger than me, and we do stuff in the yard together. The last time I was out at the coast, you know, he was working on a gate, and we were trying to figure out a way to level off this one spot. It's stuff like that, or we play cards. <laughs> he loves playing games, so we play a lot of cards when I'm out there. So oh, everything's on, so let's just go around and check everything. Well, the ones over the, the ones over by the tree, you know, well, we're not. Okay, show me. We have to walk around and show me. I could see till I was ten, so I mean, I I do remember. I remember the lights inside the house, you know, turning on the tree and um, turning out the lights, and even lighting candles, just so the you know the whole room was just sort of turned into this you know, the very softly glowing light from the candles and from the from the trees. So so I guess that's what I that's what I remember as a kid. I don't know. Okay, Donald, I plugged those ones in over here. Like I said, I, I, I do it more for my kids and, and more and more in the last couple of years for my brother just because of what's going on with him. So maybe we can move the candy cane. You wanna move it this way? Yeah, but it's tied to the at the moment it's attached to the oh, okay. branch. So I'm gonna take it off. Oh I see it. Can we untie it? I'll get it. There's all kinds of traditions. I mean, it's uh, traditions that I remember as a kid. You know, the traditions that, you know, we've established with my own kids and their mom. And just, you know, things that I come around to every year. There's just all this decorating inside and out. I'm going to attach the cord, like, right there. And then can you just take the whole string and see how far around the tree you can get? You know, I always return to the, you know, to the Christmas story every year in some way, whether it's going to some kind of performance or reading it or watching, you know, some show that deals directly with the Christmas story. When I think about the, the nativity, you know, and the birth of Christ, you know, and the return of light, I mean, it ties up symbolically in that way. But I also think a lot about the solstice and sort of the darkening of the year. <laughs> and the turn after December 21st into, you know, back into the movement, <laughs> the long movement towards spring. Okay, remember if your throat starts bothering you, you have to go in, okay? Yeah. Okay. For me, Christmas okay. is a time to spend um, with my family, even quietly. And I suppose this year is really going to, you know, underscore this for me, it's a time to, you know, repair anything that needs repairing or heal anything that needs healing. And, um, and appreciate, you know, spending time together.